Hi everyone, it's me again. I'm Alan, and today we have our next episode with Kay, our guest speaker, about the differences between UK and Hong Kong regarding the law, the dual law degree program. So Kay studies uh, in UK and the D University College London, plus the University of Hong Kong in the law degree program. So today. In the last episode, we talk about the differences, and in this episode, we will talk about the course itself. So, hi, Kay. How are you today? I'm doing fine. Great. So, um, you're currently now you're currently in Hong Kong, and you're start you're going to have your second final your your final year starting in September, right? Yes, I'm in Hong Kong, starting my final year in September. Yes. All right. So. Regarding about regarding the degree program, I actually got a questions about the competitiveness, the competitive mm -hmm. edge of this course. Um, first of all, what are the courses? What are, what are the course contents in this course? Um, so, as um, for course contents for our first two years, we basically take the same courses as normal. Um, LLB students in UCL. So we mm. take um, eight full year courses in total in our first two years. And those are basically the core courses such as contract law, land law, um, public mm. law, jurisprudence, etc. And mm. um, when we come back to HKU, we do seven courses per semester. Um, in our third year, we start with some introductory courses. So the courses that normal HAU LLB students would take in their first year. And then we mm -hmm. take some core courses and we get to choose um, law electives, free electives from other faculties and also common core courses. I'm studying the, content, uh, the courses in two places. Do you think that the student's career after graduating in this degree program as competitive as or more competitive than the students who study a single degree in Hong Kong or in UK? Um, I would say that it's difficult to say that the degree alone gives you a more competitive edge because after all your mm. application depends on a lot of things like your grades, um, how determined you are to get into a particular practice area and also your personality. But um, from my own experience, I think that this degree program gives you like something special to talk about with your interviewers. Mm. So rather than being, you know, a normal LLB student in either the UK or HAU, a lot of interviewers don't really know about your program. So that gives you something to talk about. And mm. I think some interviewers are rather interested in the program. So yes, I wouldn't say that the program itself gives you an edge, but um, it does make your interviewers feel a bit more interested in like you and your background. Are there any differences of expectation before and after you studied the course? Um, I think the difference would be like how difficult the course is, like the work, like in terms of workload, I think. Mm. I mean, before I started the program, I wouldn't say that I researched like really thoroughly and that I understood exactly what was required of me. Like mm. by the time I started, I realized how difficult it is to actually do like four four year courses in the first year, like without knowing anything and having your exams count a hundred percent. So that <laughs> part was tough. And I also didn't really realize that when I come back to HKU, I would be taking seven courses per semester, which is actually a lot compared to other students yeah. because normal students take five courses per semester and we take seven. So that's also quite a lot. So yeah, I think I didn't, I wouldn't say I expected that. I should have expected it, but I didn't really when I applied <laughs> for the program. <laughs> did you did you take the summer course, like the summer courses as that is that was optional, right? Do you take that? Yeah, I don't yeah, I don't have any summer courses. Okay. And and there are options for you. Yeah, I have options yeah. to take summer courses, but usually we do internships over the summer. So I prefer oh, not to do courses. All right. Yeah. Okay. So is internship a required um, session for graduation? Or basically you don't need the internship? 
Um, yes and no. Like for our normal summer internships, mm. it's completely optional. But um, for mm. the dual degree program, back in Asia, you would have to do um, internships during semester time. So that's mm. in the HKU legal clinic. So we have to mm. work in the legal clinic um, for two semesters, basically. And for each semester, we have to handle four cases. So we will mm. interview the client, um, write research memos, and listen to the volunteer lawyer give advice to the client, basically. So that's kind of like an internship that we have to do during term time. And we need to do those internships to graduate. During term time, that means during your studies, right? Like, for example, yes. in your second term, you will, uh, other than studying, like doing your, your course, you also have to spend some time in the legal clinic. Yes. Uh, and you, you, you don't need that in UK. Oh, um, in the UK, we also have to do pro bono, which is basically legal volunteering work. So that's also oh. a requirement for dual degree students in particular. So you have a choice between two programs. One's working at the UCL legal clinic, and the other oh. one is um, going to teach students in the UK, like primary or secondary school students in the UK about some legal concepts, basically. So that's also a compulsory thing in, the UC oh. in UCL. What is actually quite challenging, as you, as you mentioned that you have a lot of <laughs> really high workload already and you still need to devote the time on these kind of internship pro, pro, pro bono experience. Yeah. yeah. So other than that, do you have any, did you, did you encounter any great challenges while studying in this course? Um, for example, any particular skill set that you feel not enough, not adequate um, after studying the after graduating from the, the DSE, any, anything that you feel difficult while studying this program? Um, I would say that like all of the skill sets are progressive. So you couldn't mm. really expect to say that, oh, I did well in DSE English and I would be able to nail like all the English requirements in law school mm. because it's really another set of criteria. I would say that your reading skills are important, but they're mm. likely not enough. Like when you read cases, your like level of understanding has to be much deeper than when you read an English article for the DSE. And in terms of writing skill, I think that part's particularly different from an English writing paper in the DSE. I'll say that it's more similar to actually liberal studies and that you don't really need to use like fancy vocabularies or fancy sentence mm. structures. It's really about being able to get to the point and be, being able to present your arguments clearly enough. So I think like don't expect yourself to be able to nail like English in law school, even though you did well in DSE English, it's a learning process that everyone has to go through. Mm, okay. While studying in UK, do you have a, um, a, a professor, a professor tutor that that follows your study progress? Um, yes, we all have academic mentors. So it's basically uh -huh. a member of staff in the faculty who you would meet up with, um, say, once every semester. So you would talk a bit about your study progress, how you're adapting to UK life and all of that. Mm. So it's also someone you could approach when you encounter any particular difficulties um, during your time at, a, um, at UCL. Okay, so regarding your career, are you are you thinking of like are you thinking of going to be a? Do you need to decide already at this moment whether you want to go for like being a solicitor or do you want to be a um, like a barrister? Um. So for the legal industry, we actually decide our choices pretty early on. So mm. um, in our penultimate years. If you want to be a solicitor in like bigger international firms, we already have to apply. So mm -hmm. in the past summer, I, sorry, in this summer, I did some internships and basically for some of them called vacation schemes. If I do well mm -hmm. enough, I could get a training contract offer that is for Whoa. two years later. So basically the timeline is that you apply two years before you train. So if I train in 2023, I would apply, I would be applying this year and I might get an offer for solicitors. Oh. 
Oh. Yeah. And as for barristers, I think you apply later on. So could be a year before your pupilage. Right. Well, that actually the timeline, the time planning is very important here because it is, yeah, yeah, the, yeah it is quite different from the other uh, courses that a lot of courses they would just search for the job after or one year before they graduate. Yeah, but yeah. you would need actually need two years in advance. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So um, you have you mentioned that you have a thesis, oh, no, a, a dissertation later on, right? Um, what kind of dissertation? will they require? It is a like kind of research topic or it is a, um, I don't know, like what kind, what kind of dissertation it is? I think it's, mm, to be honest, I think it's any legal topic, but it's mm. probably gonna be research oriented because I think it's around um, 10,000 10, words. Yeah, around 10,000 words. So um, that would be something you probably have to research on and read case law. But in terms of the area of law and which like faculty member you want as your supervisor, it's all up to yourself. But do you need to report or present to the UK again later on? Um, no, after no. we finish all of our courses in HAU, we are, I think our credits just get like transferred and they're like mutually oh. compatible. So if we finish HAU, then we're basically done. Right, oh, okay. Okay, so they're actually quite separate. They're not actually- Yeah, they're- Oh, okay, cool, got it. So my last question for the chit chat today, any single golden word of advice you would like to tell, to suggest to the PSG students? Um, perseverance. Perseverance. Yes. Mm -hmm. Would you explain that a bit more? <laughs> yeah, I think um, both in terms of studying for the DSE to your application process to both um, Hong Kong and UK universities. Mm. And if you get into law school during your studies and at last during your job applications, it's all a pretty tough process where you meet a lot of competition. It's not something you could do like mm. for a day and give up. It's True. actually an ongoing process you keep on learning you keep on improving for applications you have to fine tune them it may have to apply to tens of firms and only get one offer so it's i think it's all about finding your weaknesses being able to improve and most importantly being able to persevere throughout the process and meet your goal at at the end so don't give up have a clear goal persevere through it and try to meet your goal yeah. Great, thank you so much. And I believe all the all of you, the, all the SEA students, all the students who would like to study abroad, would take take K's advice, the perseverance, like persevere through all different different difficulties and challenges, and you will nail it. Thank you so much, K, for today, and I will see you all in the next episode with our new guest speaker. Bye bye. If you have any comments, please comment something down there. <laughs> okay, bye bye. Bye.